and then from here again in San Angelo, Texas, DC Mega Barbarian. In addition to considerations, taken a little bit from St. Bernardine of Siena on the seventh word of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the promise one of those two men. St. Bernardine tells us that this most immaculate and pure heart of Our Lady communicated, because of her purity, very succinctly and briefly. And so that we have recorded in our Blessed, Blessed Virgin Mary only seven words that she spoke in her entire life that are recorded. The first two words she spoke to the angel, to the angel Gabriel. How can this be since I do not know man, and let it be done to me according to thy word. The second two words she spoke to her cousin Elizabeth from her charity. And she said her name, Ave Elizabeth, Hail Elizabeth. For Elizabeth, the St. Joseph was purified of original sin in his womb. He leapt for joy, knowing that the mother of the Lord has come, and he became a prophet. He became a prophet by just hearing the word of the pure heart of Mary, saying only Ave Elizabeth. And then she spoke her longest word, which was also to Elizabeth. For she is very brief, says St. Bernardine of Siena. She is brief, except when it comes to one thing, and that is magnifying the Lord. Speaking of the glory of the Lord, speaking of how wonderful God is in his work and his creation, then she speaks long, and she says, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he that is mighty has done great things unto me, and holy is his name. Giving thanks and communicating about the goodness and greatness of God, she speaks long. In all other things, she is brief. Two more words. The fifth and sixth word, she speaks to her son. And she tells them that they have no wine. And then the final word that she speaks, the first of 12 years old, speaks to her son, saying about her sorrow, thy father and I sought thee sorrowing. And then the final word she speaks to her son is, they have no wine. And that is the prayer makes Christ driven because they have no wine, he is driven to die on the cross for our sins. He is driven to make sure that wine of the blessed sacrament, wine of the divine love, wine of the sanctifying grace, is poured throughout the entire world, simply because his mother said they have no wine. It is the greatest prayer petition that has ever been made with the most great effect. And then, this contemplation here on the final word and its power. Her seventh word, she speaks only to the servants. She says, do whatever he tells you. And here we consider, from whence comes power? From whence comes authority? You know that we have in our, we are all here on this earth under God. And that every time we obey a command, it is because it comes from God. And this is why we obey commands. Authority comes from God. But the queen has authority. The mother has authority. And the queen has authority. And what does she do when she speaks? And she speaks in the greatest of power when she says to the servants, Do. You do. You obey the command. I, the mother, am speaking. Thou must do. What must thou do? Whatever he tells you. And this is the secret to authority. You know that the Pope has the greatest authority on earth. And under him the bishops have authority. And under them the priests of parishes have authority. And under them all priests and auxiliary bishops also have authority. And fathers of family have authority. And kings have authority. And the guys in charge of companies have authority. Mayors have authority. All men on earth have participation in authority. But where does their authority come from? And how do they exercise authority? You go back to the very beginning. And God said to Adam, Adam, I have made this whole world for you. I made this entire world for you. You're in charge of it. But then Adam decided that he was going to use that world for himself rather than for his creator. He was willing to use his authority and his power to aggrandize and develop his own self. And therefore, he wanted to eat the forbidden fruit against God that he might be like unto God and have a greater power and that his power would be to use all things for himself and not for his creator. And therefore, God came down to Adam and said, Because thou, the plant shall rebel against you, 
There shall be thorns. I put you in charge of the world. But now the plants are going to rebel against you. Not only will the plants rebel against you, your children will rebel against you. Your wife will rebel against you. You will experience rebellion. Whenever you go out and give a command, there will be a fight against your command. There will be a combat against it. Because thou, Adam, what did you do? You decided to disobey me in order to build your own personal kingdom. And therefore, you are going to experience rebellion wherever you go. So what is the answer to rebellion? The Blessed Virgin Mary gave the answer to the greatest rebellion of all, which is the rebellion of Satan. When the Blessed Virgin said, fiat, one word, because the devil said, how can God lower himself to become a creature? That's absurd. How can God go from heaven to earth and become a man? Lower himself to the lowest of creatures and humble himself to that degree, which is unworthy of God. Explain to me why God should do that. And of the billions of angels, no one could explain. Therefore, one angel said, Micaiah, who is like unto God? I cannot explain any more than the other angels, but I know who is like unto God. I don't have an answer to your question, Lucifer. I have no answer to your question, but I will say who is like unto God, and I will follow God. And when that Michael, the lower angel, the archangel, stood up as who is like unto God, the millions and billions of angels, in fact, billions of angels above him said, if God can submit himself and to become a man, and we don't know why, we will submit ourselves to a lower archangel named Mikael, and we will follow him. And two-thirds of the angels followed Mikael, and he defeated in a great war that took place in heaven. And he fought against Lucifer and drove him and one-third of, of the angels down into hell, and they became devils. St. Michael didn't know the answer. When God said, I will become man. And Lucifer said, why? And no one could answer and, and the lower angel, we do not know his original name, but his name was changed to Mikael, who is like unto God. The answer came 4,004 years later, when a 15-year-old girl was asked by an angel to be the mother of God. And she did not say why. She did not say who is like unto God. She simply said, if God wants to be, become man, let it be done. Fiat, let it be done. And she taught the angels. St. Bernard tells us on that day, she became the queen of the angels. They have been thinking in their wisdom, what is the answer? We follow Michael, but we don't know the answer. God wants to become man. Why does he want to become man? But she gave the answer, who is like unto God? Now in the seventh word, she gives the answer. The fiat answer is Lucifer. Now she must answer Adam. She must answer the, the mistake of Adam, the sin of Adam, by which he was going to use his power to be somehow in control without obeying God, to rule things without God. And what is the answer to authority? Whenever we speak as authorities, when a king speaks as king, when a pope speaks as pope, when a bishop speaks as bishop, when a priest speaks as priest, when a father of family speaks as father of family, what is he supposed to say? Son, do whatever he tells you. That is what we are supposed to say. Hence, our authority is not absolute. Even the Holy Father's authority is not absolute. When the Holy Father tells us, do whatever he tells you, we obey. And we obey because a mother told us, do whatever he tells you. And if we hear whatever Christ says, we've got the strength to obey. But if we hear something else, then we say no. And hence, a very simple rule about authority. What is authority? Authority is a participation in God's power, in God's word, in God's commands, in what God wants. And since the participation in God, no one can have authority who does not say, or can exercise authority, who does not say, do whatever he tells you. And, it's, and the danger is, at some point we say, I don't want you to do what God tells you. I don't want you to follow the Holy Gospel. I don't want you to follow the divine ways. I don't want you to follow the ways of our ancestors the last 2,000 years. I don't want you to follow the custom of the saints. I want you to follow a new way. That is not what he tells you. 
and therefore we do not obey. And then St. Paul said, if we ourselves, St. Paul, or an angel from heaven, tell you something different than what we have already told you, let him be anathema. And hence in our present crisis in the church, we have no problem of authority. Whenever the Pope Francis or the local bishop or any priest tells us to go against God, whenever they tell us to go their own particular way and not the way of the gospel and not the way of divine truth, then we say no. But when they say to go the way he tells you, today is one of the mysterious days. Today is the day of the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And on this day, the Blessed Virgin Mary was disobeyed by Pope Pius XII. And in 1942, out of fear, the Pope did not obey heaven. And the Pope established the feast in the heart of Mary when he was asked not to establish a feast. He was asked to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And he was almost going to do it. But then what happened? The Russians became good guys. The Russians were fighting with the Nazis up until 1942. But then in 42, they switched over and started fighting with the, with the Americans and with the English. They switched sides. And so he said, I can't now consecrate Russia to the heart of Mary because they're now with us. And if I consecrate Russia, then that means I'll be saying they're bad guys and they need to be, need to be converted. But I can't do that. Let's wait until another time. I'm going to consecrate the world. And I'm going to create a feast, and surely Mary will be happy. But there's only one problem. Is it what he told her to do? Was it what he was told to do by heaven? No, it isn't. Therefore, he disobeyed heaven in creating the feast in the Heart of Mary. He disobeyed heaven in saying he had a devotion to the Magic Heart. Because we do not follow what is holy, what we think is good, but whatever he tells us. What Christ tells us through his Holy Mother, and she has more power than anyone else. If anyone has a right to say, I say do this because I'm your mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary has more right than anyone else. And then the Blessed Virgin Mary did not say, do this because I'm your mother. The Blessed Virgin Mary said, you servants, you fill the water pots because Christ tells you. And they listened to Christ because of her. And times have not changed. If we are going to be faithful in this great crisis in the church, we must listen to what Christ says because the mother told us to listen to what he says. And then recognize that all authority comes only from God and that all authority is only to say the seventh word of the Holy Mother. Do whatever he tells you. And all other commands are a waste. And all other commands have no authority and we need not follow them. Look at us, you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.